Direct from the heart of Midland, this is the May 2017 edition of MPS Today. My name is Scott Cochran, Curriculum Specialist for Auxiliary Education and host of the show. Once again, our show today is going to be STEM-tastic. This is the second of two shows focused on all things STEM in the Midland Public Schools. By now, you've probably heard that in schools these days, it's all STEM all the time. Now, STEM is the focus on the integration of science, technology, engineering, and math for our students, and is prevalent throughout all of our schools. Last month, we learned about commercial arts at the high schools and the Northeast Middle School Robotics team. Today, once again, we'll focus on STEM opportunities for students, and this time, we'll learn about robotics on the other side of town at Jefferson Middle School, and also uh, the welding opportunities at Midland High School and auto technology at Dow High School. Now remember, you can find all of our programming, including graduation, select concerts, and athletic events on our YouTube site. So just go to the Midland Public Schools website, www.midlandps.org, click on the YouTube button, and you can find all of our shows there. Now let's welcome our guest to the studio. From the Jefferson Middle School Robotics Program, please join me in greeting uh, mentor and leader Sudi Ammerman and students Lucas Callahan and TJ Neuerfeld. Uh, Mrs. Ammerman, Lucas, and TJ, welcome to the show. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you you bet. Now, Mrs. Ammerman, uh, what is your connection to Jefferson Middle School and to the robotics team? Okay, so I actually have a um, sixth grade student who um, participated at, um, in M FLL at Adams, and then when she moved up to Jefferson at Middle School, we, we formed a um, first tech challenge team at Jefferson, and um, we actually formed a, a team of sixth graders, um, which is the Jefferson Psy Dogs. I also have a, um, a student who is an alumni of the charge um, who's in college now, okay. so I understand the FIRST program and what it's all about. Yeah. Now you mentioned so, FIRST, so uh, that's the uh, general yeah. robotics program, right? Right. So the reason why I have so much passion for this program is not so much the robotics piece because I'm not very technical. Yeah. I leave that to the kids. Um, but the FIRST program is all about developing confidence on being able to give them exposure to the technologies so that when they do actually um, have to embrace something, they can actually have the confidence. So they're sure. able to touch the power tools or touch the, you know, do programming. Um, and the FIRST program is all about them failing and learning to fall down so that they make mistakes and learn from their mistakes. Sure. Um, they get a challenge in the fall in this program and they have to solve it in 12, 12 weeks and um, it's hard. It's They have to strategize, yeah. they have to figure out what they want to do and um, just like the high school program they have to figure out how they're going to solve their, you know, and be strategic in their competitions. Absolutely. So it's great stuff. And then there's lots of so, there's lots of collaboration that happens too, right? I mean, they have to work together. Yes, there's a lot of teamwork. The first yeah. program is more than robots. It's also about them developing their personal skills. So there's sure. a lot of pe speaking skills. Um, they're expected to do everything themselves. It's a student run. Um, so the mentors are really supposed to just be coaches and mentors, and the kids are actually working on the robot. Um, and they're also learning things like the concept of Grace's professionalism, which is a first concept. And that's actually very different from other um, programs where um, gracious professionalism about helping other teams. So when we go to competitions, okay. it's not unusual for us to actually help other our competitors. Um, and we will actually give them a screwdriver or give them a part um, and help other people. So it's very real life. Um, it's yeah. very m mimicking the real world. Awesome. Great. Uh, well, uh, Lucas and TJ, tell us a little bit about yourselves. Now, you're at Jefferson Middle School. Uh, what grade are you in and, and what do you really like about school? Lucas? I'm in sixth grade okay. and I guess I really like um, my second hour subject, world geography. Okay, mm -hmm. awesome. So you, and you're studying the Eastern Hemisphere this year or Western Hemisphere? Western Hemisphere. Western Hemisphere. So that's going, you're enjoying that? Yes. Great. And uh, you're involved with robotics. Uh, what else do you like to do at school? Um, I do swim team. Okay. I really like swimming. Yeah. Awesome. So you get a chance to do all kinds of different things, it sounds like. Mm -hmm. And TJ, how about you? Uh, I'm in seventh grade and I really like uh, band. Uh, that's really fun to play all the, um, play all the instruments yeah. and all together. And um, uh, last year I did uh, a comp pro computer programming type of class after school activities. So. I like doing that, that type too. of things. What do you play in the band? 
Uh, I play bassoon and alto sax. Oh, okay. So a couple different instruments mm -hmm. going on. Well, it sounds, you know, that's one of the neat things about our schools, right? There's so many great opportunities for you in the classroom mm -hmm. and, in, and other things, too. That's, that's awesome. Well, uh, Mrs. Ammerman, what is the Jefferson you, Middle School Robotics teams, I mean, what do they do? So you mentioned that you're given a challenge and you have to try to overcome the challenge. Uh, what are some of the steps that the students take? What are they studying to overcome the challenge? So what they're really studying is programming um, and mechanical design, problem solving, engineering, teamwork, um, all the things that go into solving a big problem. Um, in the meetings, they're learning to work together. They're learning to um, make mistakes. They're learning how to program, which is a big deal for them. Sure. Um, so most of them are programming on Android Studio and um, both of our teams right now. Some, some pro teams do program in Java. Um, and they're learning to work together. Um, they're learning how to communicate. Um, and they're learning how to solve um, engineering challenges. Sure. Um, so they're given, this year's challenge was called Velocity Vortex and they had to pick up balls and throw balls and next season they'll get a new challenge. Great. So now I see we got a couple different robots here with us. Um, Lucas, I think you mentioned that, was this the robot that you worked on? Yes. So can you kind of point out some things, what, what's going on with this robot? Well, uh, we have the two padded uh, boards on either side of the robot. Okay. They are designed to, uh, during the competition, there are buttons on either side of the playing field, and they're designed to push those buttons. Okay. Great. And then we also have a sweeper in the front or back over here, actually. So the side that's more towards you over there? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's where you, you say you have to collect like these four inch wiffle balls and that's where they mm -hmm. come in right there? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then where do they get thrown from? Um, we don't throw them. Okay. But our, uh, there are ramps, two ramps. Oh, I see. And you can uh, launch the particles through the ramps and those get you five points, uh, one to five points. Okay. And uh, it that sweeper is also designed to go reverse so it can shoot the particles. Sure, so it goes mm -hmm. both ways. Mm -hmm. Awesome. And TJ, do you, you had the same challenge, correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. And so tell us a little bit about you know, I knew you were telling me before off camera that this is this isn't everything. This no. is kind of the, oh, no. the chassis and the, uh, yes. what's left. But tell us what we can see here. Okay, so right here you're seeing four mechanical wheels with um, four motors on each for uh, one for each wheel. And so mechanical wheels, what they allow you to do is you can go forward and backwards. You can go side to side like, while keeping your same kind of like. Uh, where the robot's staying in the same position but going mm -hmm. side to side and then you can also turn it to go 45 degrees or 30 degrees depending how you program it. Sure. Mm -hmm. Now you mentioned programming. TJ, I, what I remember hearing about is that there's a portion of the competition time where the robots have to act autonomously, right? Yes. Where nobody's mm -hmm. controlling it. Mm -hmm. So were you involved in that at all or what do you know about that? Yes. So um, in the first 30 seconds of the game uh, it's autonomous, and so um, what you basically do is you um, program the robot to. You have to. The team has to come up and think of what you want to do in autonomous, and so then what you do is. I was a programmer, and so you have to program the robot to do that, and it's a lot of trial and error stuff yeah. to do. And what did you have your robot doing during that time? So during that time, what we did is from starting position, we went at a 45 degree angle to the beacons and we pressed them. And then what we did was um, we went to the center of the field where there's like this like big thing in the middle that spins around and we went and we parked on there and that got us uh, quite a few points. Okay, awesome. Now. Uh, Lucas and TJ, when, when we were talking with uh, the, the Northeast team last month, they told us a little bit about the challenge. So you're not given step-by-step uh, -step instructions on these robot, how to build the robot, right? Mm -hmm. So how do you figure out even the structure, how it should go together, or how are you going to make it achieve these challenges? I mean, how do you get to that point, Lucas, for your team? All right. Well, we started off... Uh, we uh, received a robot from uh, the team before us. Okay. Mm -hmm. And it was basically just a chassis. 
like their robot except less kind of stripped down, just kind of the basic yeah. frame almost, okay? And uh, it had treads instead of the wheels we have now. And uh, we decided, uh, we looked at uh, what we wanted to do in the competition, decided what we wanted to do, how to accomplish it, and then put all of our ideas into a design and chose the most plausible idea. So that whole process of being given the challenge and then coming up with a solution and then trying different solutions. I mean, how long did that take you guys? Like, uh, TJ, for your team, how long did that take you to do? Um, just like Lucas said, we, um, at the very beginning, after the kickoff, so once after we know what our, um, the season is about, uh, we then um, basically come up with ideas of um, what's like the easiest thing to get and um, should we go for the hardest thing and all that. And then eventually, uh, once we have uh, basically a concept for our robot, then we kind of divide and conquer. So like they build prototypes and then eventually we build the real thing and then it becomes a robot. Okay, so your first step was just to figure out what exactly you wanted it to yes. do. Mm -hmm. And then you tried different ways to, to see mm -hmm. How to, how to make it do that. Yeah. How long do you think that took? I mean, if, if you started in September, we, did you finish that up by November? I mean, what was the basic timeline? It depends on the season, but like last season, uh, we did, we, it basically took about maybe till October in that range, and okay. including like building the prototypes, it took us to like the very end of October. And our season, I mean, our competition was in November, mid-November, so we had to build the final robot. Okay. Mm -hmm. Wow, awesome. Now, Mrs. Ammerman, what are some of your goals for the team for the rest of this school year and, and moving into next year? Well, we're kind of really excited at Jefferson right now because um, we're actually in a transition right now. So the Techno Huskies has about eight kids that are graduating and moving up to high school. Okay. So they have a lot of openings. Yeah. Um, our team has um, 10 kids on it right now. The Side Dogs has 10 teams on it right now. So we have a few openings there. But the other thing we're looking to do is actually to build a third team at Jefferson. So right now we're actually in recruiting. Um, in the month of April, we're going to be recruiting. We're doing an open house in May, and we're hoping to get more kids involved um, sure. and to actually field three teams. We recruited mentors from Dow next year in Zalp. Um, so we have professional mentors that are going to work with the kids because in this program it's really more about the professionals coming in from other industries versus right. parents being mentors. Um, and we went out and we recruited. Um, we have some really excited um, mentors that don't have kids in the program and they just want to, you know, pass their passion on. So I'm really yeah. excited about that. Um, obviously, we're looking to get more girls excited about it because there is, a, you know, we're tr trying to just build that branch and make sure they kind of gain their confidence with. Um, engineering skills. Sure. Um, that 13 may be an all-girls team. We're not sure yet. We're still right. evaluating that and whether the, the feasibility of that. Um, but I'm looking forward to actually having three teams at Jefferson yeah. next year. So That's um, awesome. I, I noticed when I uh, went and observed some of the high school mm -hmm. level competitions that the Charge and the Like a Boss mm -hmm. teams were at from our high schools. There were, there were a lot of girls that were involved. And yes. it's, I know it's something that we're always working to do in the science and technology, engineering, yes. mathematics fields to make sure that it's boys and girls represented, yeah. right? So. And that's near and dear to my heart um, because I have my high schooler that, or my college daughter yeah. and freshman right, right now, and she's actually in an electrical uh, engineering class. And if she didn't re do robotics, I think she would have dropped that yeah. class by now. So she knows what she's, in, like, because it's all theoretical right now. Right. I think she would have switched majors by now, okay. but I, I give credit to the charge that she's sticking it out right. and knows that it's something she wants to do. If she didn't have that experience, she probably would have just changed majors. She can picture where so, she's headed because exactly, she's done this sort of exactly, thing. Exactly, right? because Absolutely. she's doing all the theoretical work now. Yeah. Now, yeah. Uh, if Mrs. Amarin, if folks want to get involved, whether mm -hmm. as mentors or as students who want to be involved, mm -hmm. parents who want to learn more information, where should they go to get that information? The best thing to do is either talk to Mr. Davis or reach out to any of us. Um, anybody, any of the mentors, they can kind of see me. Um, or um, there's an open house that we're doing in May. Um, but anybody, anybody from any of the um, FIRST Robotics network of mentors sure. know that we're building our program and they could reach out to us. Okay. Um, and that's just another testament mm -hmm. to, to the city of or the community of Midland as well, isn't yeah. it? That you can find mentors that uh, want to be involved and, and help our students. Yeah, and Midland's very blessed. We have some excellent sponsors. Um, Dow Next Year Zalt um, just sponsored um, the Psy Dogs. Sure. Um, they just went on a tour of their facility, and um, we're very blessed with our corporate partners. No um, doubt. 
no doubt about it. Well, uh, last question mm -hmm. for Lucas and TJ. Why don't you tell us something, either there's something that you've done that was new this year that you thought was really cool involved with the robotics or something that surprised you this year uh, when you were doing robotics? Uh, so, so far, I've just been doing FLL and um, I attended a different school, kind of out of the Midland, or, well, Michigan area. Mm -hmm. And uh, they, in middle school, they also had an FLL team. They didn't do FTC. Okay. So uh, when I came here, I was surprised. I knew nothing about FTC. Mm -hmm. And I uh, really liked it. I liked being able to use uh, more tools, um, better building materials. Uh, you got to express uh, what you thought more because okay. in FLL you had, well, you had instructions for your robot. So you really enjoyed the kind of the being able to think about how to make it and then to be able to make what you were thinking about. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. TJ, how about for you? Um, well, it's my second year doing FTC, and so I joined the programming team this year, and so it was very fun working on your computer. And then um, we got like a prototype chassis just like this, and we worked it out on the field, and so that was very fun. And then also um, a surprise is um, in last season's uh, robot, uh, we had a shooter with a conveyor belt in it, and so I was really surprised that that actually worked. Okay. And it went into <laughs> the goals and all yeah, that. Yeah, sure, that's awesome. Yep. Well, I tell you what, uh, so TJ, you're in the seventh grade and, and Lucas in the sixth grade, correct? So it's pretty amazing experiences that you have in mechanical engineering and computer programming at such an early age, and uh, it sounds like you're doing wonderfully, and, and I'm sure you're looking forward to being involved again next year, aren't you? Great. Well, Mrs. Amram, thank you for taking the thank time you. to be with us and, and being involved in the program. And, thank and you. And Lucas and TJ, thank you for talking with us today, and, and good luck. Thank you. Thank you. You bet. Um, well, what a great STEM opportunity for our students. Uh, up next, mm -hmm. you'll see the latest news and notes from our Counselor's Corner, and then we'll learn yet more about other STEM opportunities for Midland Public Schools students. So stick around for more MPS Today right after this. Open up your books to page 360. Did you just look at your phone while you was in class? You played yourself. Talking about inspirational quotes. You gotta believe in yourself. Don't ever play yourself. The key is to make it, so make it. Louise, Louise, can you give me an example of an inspirational quote? Don't play yourself. The key is to make it. And who said that? I did. Now that's a major key alert. Learn the real major keys to getting to college at GetSchool.com. Welcome to the May edition of Counselor's Corner. I am Jill English, counselor at Dow High School, and sitting with me is Lori Hallberg, also a counselor at Dow High. We are here today to give you an update on what's happening in the counseling world at both Dow High and Midland High. Now that May is upon us, we are at the beginning of our end of the year wrap up, which begins with welcoming our current eighth graders to the high school. If you have an eighth grader, the time is quickly approaching for their transition to the high school. To help with that transition, there will be a new student orientation for incoming ninth graders. It will be held on May 17th at Dow High at 6 p.m. And at Midland High, it will be held in August. Now let's jump to the topic of testing. If your student is interested in retaking the SAT, or possibly taking the SAT for the first time, it will be offered at Dow High on Saturday, June 3rd. The deadline to register for the test is May 9th. You will register and pay online at collegeboard.org. While we're on the topic of registering, if a student plans to take an online class this summer through Midland Public Schools, check the district website for registration information. You may contact the counseling office at each high school for more information. Before seniors finish on May 26, there are a couple of items they need to complete. The first is a senior exit form. This form allows the district to track which college a student will be attending. 
as well as find out how much scholarship money each student has been offered. We like to add up this amount and see how much in total was offered to our senior class. The amount is always incredible. It is also important for those seniors who will be attending college next year to log into Parchment and request their final transcript to be sent to the college they will be attending. Students can make that request right now by selecting Hold for Next Grading Period, then the transcript will be sent the end of June when all final transcripts have been updated. If a student does not send a final transcript to their college, they could be dropped from their registered classes and possibly lose financial aid and scholarship money. As you can see, this is a really important step to remember. We will be visiting senior English classes to remind seniors to do this. Also, I want to remind seniors and their parents to watch their attendance carefully. If they exceed 12 absences, whether they are excused or unexcused, they will have to take final exams and pass the exam with 70% or higher in order to pass the class. That's it for this month's Counselor's Corner. Join us next month when we talk about important information for June and the summer. I dare you. I dare you to change the world. Yeah, you. Getting that college education. I dare you to be somebody important. Like be a teacher. Or a reality TV star. I dare you to stand up here. To call the shots. To be a role model. An inspiration. An innovator. To be a teacher. Think you can change my life? Make me excited about science like you? Have a career that really means something? Then do it. I dare you. Welcome back to MPS Today. We complete today's exploration of STEM opportunities in the Midland Public Schools by talking with Mr. Lance Ransom, auto technology teacher at Dow High School. Mr. Ransom, welcome to the show. Thank you. Now, tell us a little bit about yourself. How long have you been teaching and what do you teach at Dow High School? I've been teaching about nine years. Um, originally, before I got into teaching, I was an uh, engineering student at Muskegon Community College and then transferred to CMU for my teaching degree. Um, then I worked in independent and uh, dealership setting um, and then started teaching from there and that's where I've been ever since. Um, at Dow High School I teach uh, car care which is our basic automotive class and then I teach uh, automotive technology one and two which are advanced vocational classes. Okay and so the car care class is isn't that a one semester class for it students? Is. Kind yep. of introduction to the shop and, yep. and they get a chance to have hands-on opportunities. Yep absolutely. And yep. then the automotive technology is more of like a two-hour block, right? Yes. Yep. Yep. Full year, two-hour um, block. Um, and actually, it's a two-year for Auto Tech 1, and then they can come back for Auto Tech 2. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, you also serve in the Navy, correct? Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, well, thank you for doing that. Thank you for your service. Absolutely. We appreciate that very much. Um, how long have you been doing that, and what are some of your more recent experiences with the Navy? Uh, I've been in the reserves for five and a half years. Um, uh, machine repairman is my job. Uh, most recent experience is I went to Louisville, Kentucky for training to get ready to go to Guam, which is where I do my annual training, which is uh, usually about a two-week um, time period where we integrate with the active duty Navy and work on the sailor or work with the sailors on the uh, submarine tender that I'm attached to. So basically it's a floating shop so we work in machine shop or wood shop or um, wherever they need us and basically help the active duty sailors for that time period. Okay so you're working in a machine shop or mm -hmm. working on the submarines it sounds Yes like. yep repairing whatever they need um, again we'll work with the active duty sailors um, helping them fix whatever needs to be done on the sub and then sometimes we'll actually deliver parts of the submarines that are okay. that are in port right along with the submarine tender. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So how many sailors on board? I mean, um, on that boat I believe there's about 1200. That's so, a big that's a big ship. It's about 650 foot long. Okay. So yep it's a good size. I guess so. Uh, how, how many feet does it draw? I mean, how uh, I'm not sure to be honest with you. I know it's I know the beam's 85 foot and 650 okay. foot long. Uh, I can't remember decks and those types of things, right. but it's 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 a large ship. So there's actually only two sub tenders in the Navy. So okay. I'm on one of them. And, and it's, it's state you've gone to Guam a couple of years now. Yeah, this will be my third time this summer. Okay, yep. awesome. Mm -hmm. 
Now, well, let's come back to Dow High School. So you mentioned about some of the classes that you teach. Mm -hmm. And what are the goals of that auto technology, the two-year sequence for, yep. uh, for students? The biggest goal is basically to prep the students to be a basic service technician, um, meaning they can do oil changes, basic uh, room and replace components, um, tire work, um, and then work their way up and do a flat rate technician position is the goal. Um, they can do lots of different things as far as um, where they can work. But for my particular program, that's the goal. That's typically where they shoot for. I actually have a student now that's working uh, at Ford Quick Lane. He's loving it. He's, he's doing oil changes, tires, and he's been doing some service work on the customer vehicles as well. So we basically want to get them at an entry level, basic knowledge, and then they can work and grow from there as they get into the dealership. Sure. You mentioned oil changes, oil changes, and you mentioned tires. Uh, you said other components. What what types of things? Basic like um, suspension steering components. Um, they'll do basic diagnostics with scan tools. Um, just a lot of R and R, meaning so there's a, a basic part that needs to be removed, and then they replace it. Um, and then they'll they'll get into the more advanced diagnostics the longer they've been doing it. So. Um, that's kind of that's a nice fit for um, doing oil changes because it covers a lot of different areas that they can get a start with and then kind of go more in depth as they get experience and time. Okay, and so I'm sure things like brakes. Mm -hmm. you, know, you mentioned steering and suspension. Yep. Yep. Um, yep. Brakes for sure. In fact, um, next semester we'll be covering brakes. Um, there's actually eight areas in the ASC realm, and we we cover all eight on a on a basic level. Um, anything from engine performance, which is ignition, fuel systems, okay. computer systems, brakes, suspension, steering, HVAC, electrical. So mm -hmm. it's it's mm -hmm. very very broad. So there's a, there is there's a wide range. Yes. I mean, into the things like electrical and then the the yep. engine itself. I mean, there's yep. a whole that's a whole couple of worlds right there in its yep. own right. Absolutely. So what kind of technology do students use? Because it's not. I mean, you use a lot of wrenches and drills and things like that, but yep. there's all kinds of other technologies as there well, is right? yep yeah. uh, we're getting into wireless scan diagnostics uh, about two about two years ago we received um, uh, wireless scan diagnostics and what that'll do is basically you can take the scan tool um, you can plug into the vehicle and then you can take the scan tool with you it'll read wirelessly you can go anywhere in the shop you can do certain tests um, you can pull codes you can do all kinds of things and seeing it is wireless essentially anywhere in the shop you can take this device sure. so it gives you a little bit of freedom so you're not just tied to that vehicle as you're doing your diagnostics um, we're also now with the Chromebooks which has been a huge blessing um, our our database for finding all of our specifications um, which is all data they can now have that at any point in time instead of just going to our computers that we have in the class now everybody has one as long as they can get online they can access um, all data, which gives them capacities, wiring diagrams, specifications. So they can go to their own vehicle. They can get whatever they need off all data and then apply it to the vehicle um, sure. during like an open lab or something like that. Sure. So they have the hand, uh, the, the wireless uh, diagnostic tool you were yep. talking about that mm -hmm. they take around. And then once they have the information from the vehicle, yep. they go to all data and they can yep. use their Chromebooks that we give every yep. student a Chromebook mm -hmm. or there's computers in the classroom. Absolutely. Right? So there's a lot of, it sounds like there's a lot of uh, computer work going on mm -hmm. too, as long with the- There has to be. The work on in the In today's itself. vehicles, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yep. And that matches up with what we see in the shops, right? When we go to the dealership or yep. to our local auto shop, we see, we see them reading printouts the and, and uh, or not printouts, they're looking at the screen usually, yep. right? So, absolutely. Um, have you noticed a difference with your students over the years as, as more time goes by? Are mm -hmm. they more familiar with it? I mean, the technology or with the tools or both? Yep. I mean, how they're, they're completely at home. Um, in fact, with, with the auto part, I'm obviously well versed in that, but yeah. even just my own laptop, or in fact, just this morning, I, I was having an issue with getting my projector linked up with my laptop. I just had some work done to it, and, yeah. and I had a student just help me with it, and you know, so they're very at home. They're very comfortable. Um, in fact, a lot of times, um, you know, cell phones, I know we restraint to a certain extent, but they can even get on all data using their phones as well, so that can turn into a positive thing as well. Um, you can use you can use your phone for scan diagnostics as well, so we're moving in that direction. So we're taking something that they're very at home with and then applying it to something that's useful, practical, that they can make a living with. Yeah, absolutely. Now, you mentioned students can make a living, and, and even if they decide that they want to do something other than work in a shop, maybe mm -hmm. they want to go on to a, a, a four-year degree, or maybe they decide after that that, okay, I like this, but I want to do something else. Yep. It seems like they would have some basic knowledge that would really help yep. them because they'll probably be car owners, right? Yeah, so. absolutely. Um, yep. What are some of the other educational opportunities? So you mentioned some of the jobs that students can do. Yep. What are some of the other types of jobs they may work towards or mm -hmm. other types of uh, post-secondary 
opportunities for them. Yep. A big one that I've seen a lot of my students um, I, I, I've had go into mechanical engineering. They have, and even in the automotive field, as far as the design part, I have a yeah. whole section that I have my, stu my students do on career research. Um, so they've done everything from collision work to repair to engineering to design to sales to, so it's, it's a huge realm. Um, some of the schools that I have come in, including the military, to talk to my students, uh, like University of Northwestern Ohio, um, UTI, Delta College um, will articulate up to 24 credits. Um, so there, there's a lot of opportunity, not just the repair side, but also in general, according on, you know, anywhere from welding and fabrication, as well as all the other things that we previously mentioned. Sure. So they, get, they can stick with the, with the shop or do welding, fabrication. Yep. They can also get into design and mm -hmm. engineering and... Yep. There's a whole different, there's, it sounds like there's lots of different worlds there they can go into. Yep. Awesome. Well, Mr. Ransom, thank you very much for talking with us about thank you. Auto Tech. You bet. It's, it just seems like a great STEM-based opportunity for yep. our students. Thank you very much. You bet. Well, to finish our show for today, uh, you'll see pictures and videos from Central Park Elementary School. So enjoy that, and we'll see you next time on MPS Today.